everyone. Uh, welcome to the Tech Talk. Uh, this is David with Gigabyte, and I'm the business development management. And today I would like to share the information for the uh, basic immersion cooling solution. So my topic here is uh, too hot to handle and exploring the immersion cooling solution. So let's start with the uh, 2023. So in 2023, uh, which is the fast pass and global digitalization century, uh, many applications you can see there are like the AI, IoT, uh, smart agriculture, uh, 5G telecom, and cloud computing. Uh, these applications are all connected to the high-speed internet. So uh, the more advanced technology, the high performance of server and chips. So we, if we look at this uh, GPU and CPU power consumption uh, timetable, we can see for the CPU last generation and the Intel, uh, Whitley, AMD Milan, the TDP is 270 watt to 280 watt. And this generation, Genoa and Sapphire Rapid has reached to the 350 to 400 watt. And if we use the uh, GPU, for example, you can see the NVIDIA XSM4. Uh, this is 4 to 500 watt uh, in 2022. And uh, the SSM5 is 700 watt in 2023. So uh, we can see uh, like this kind of the trend, uh, there is the escalation of the power consumption year by year. So with this kind of the higher power consumption, uh, we will face the problem. The first problem will be uh, the traditional air server, air cooling server has no longer afford like this kind of the higher TDP. And the, in, this, in this situation, uh, we can use the immersion cooling to solve this kind of the problem. And the second one we can see for the cooling capacity, the air cooling per rack, uh, normally the limitation is 30 kilowatt. And uh, if we use the uh, immersion cooling, we can see the cooling capacity per tank uh, can be easily up to 80 kilowatt. So by the immersion cooling, the deployment density will be higher. And the last one is the most important things for the immersion cooling. That is the immersion cooling, we can have the huge energy saving. So if we talk about the uh, energy saving, uh, to be honest, uh, what we take from the earth is more than what we need. So. First of all, I would like to talk about the PUE. The PUE is the power usage effectiveness, and that is the data center energy efficiency indicator. So below we can see here is the pie chart. The pie chart is showing the common data center uh, total power consumption ratio. And we can see only the cooling system, only the cooling system, it takes almost 40% of the data center total power consumption. So in this case, this is the common data center air cooling. PUE is 1.9, and this is from the HR database. And if we use the PUE 2.0, for example, uh, we can see we generate or 100 kilowatt for the server, and this is for the IT facility. But we still need another 100 kilowatt, and this is for system cooling to offset the heat what we produce. So. In this case, this is the air cooling data center. So we definitely double cook the earth. Whereas if we use the immersion cooling, we can see the PUE is 1.06. And we also generate 100 kilowatt for the server. This is IT, IT facility, but we only need six kilowatt uh, for the system cooling. So we can compare this two. We can see there is the huge saving for the energy, uh, for, the, for the immersion cooling. So uh, let's go back to the market. There are, so far, there are two types of the immersion cooling. And the, so far, uh, uh, the first one is the one phase, and the other one is the two phase. So we start with the one phase immersion cooling. Uh, we can see this is the one phase immersion cooling principle. And we immerse whole server uh, into the tank. And uh, there is the cooling distribution unit we can connect between the tank and the cooling tower and do the heat exchange, uh, back, uh, bring the heat back to the cooling tower for heat dissipation. So this is the one phase immersion cooling principle. And this is gigabyte immersion cooling tank. So far we 
for, for this kind of scan, we have two types. The first one is the OCP type. Uh, it supports 18 OU for OCP server. And the other one is 25U EIA 90 inch. It can support EIA 90 inch server. So the cooling capacity is 80 kilowatt and PUE is 1.02 with 35 degree warm water temperature. And we also can have the friendly HMI, which can monitor the tank status. And inside, we can have the server immerse. And outside here, we can put, we can put four 1U switches for air cooling. And the CDU, this is the CDU. We also put it in the air. That would be easy for management. So, and for the liquid, for the liquid, Gigabyte so far, we have validated three types of the liquid. Uh, Shell, Chevron, and ExxonMobil. Uh, this is the oil-based liquid, and the global warming potential is zero. So that means that is good for environment, okay? <laughs> so this one uh, I would like to introduce is the uh, Gigabyte small-scale uh, immersion cooling, uh, one-phase immersion cooling tank. So uh, Gigabyte can provide a variety of options uh, to call our customer, depends on the different requirement and also for different market segment. So with this tank, uh, this is the small scale footprint with the high density uh, 12 u EIA 90 inch server. And the cooling capacity for this tank is 40 kilowatt. And PUE also is 1.02 with 35 degree temperature and also have the friendly HMI, and the CDU we building in the tank. So that would be a small space for deployment. And uh, the liquid, we also use the Shell, Chevron, and ExxonMobil. And this tank, because uh, it is small, so it is lighter. So we designed a caster on the, this small tank that would be easily moved. So this is our small scale uh, immersion cooling tank, 12U. And uh, this is the example for the one-phase immersion cooling. Uh, Gigabyte work with the Japanese telco giant. And uh, this immersion tank is the container type immersion tank, uh, which is mobile and eco-friendly. And it helps data center reduce the power consumption by 43%, and the PUE low down to the 1.07. And with this kind of the design, data center may set a new trend for uh, edge computing and also for the green computing. And following here, I would like to talk about the two-phase immersion cooling. For the two-phase immersion cooling, this is the principle. And why we call it two-phase? Uh, because when the liquid uh, reach the boiling limit, and the liquid will start transferring to the vapor. And after the temperatures go down uh, by the cooling tower, so the temperatures go down, the vapor will transfer back to the liquid and go back to the tank. So this is the two-phase immersion cooling principle. And for the two-phase immersion cooling principle, uh, Gigabyte, uh, we have the very successful case with the IC foundry giant. And in this case, the power consumption uh, we reduce by 30% and PUE low down to the 1.08. And Gigabyte assists customer uh, to get closer to the carbon, carbon zero emission uh, by 2050. Okay. So following here, I would like to uh, introduce our immersive ready server. This is Gigabyte Immersive Ready Server, uh, which is compatible with uh, the Liquid Immersion Cooling Partner. And Gigabyte work with the Asperitas, uh, GRC, and Summer, and provide a 90-inch Immersive Ready Server, which can directly fit into the tank. So this is our partner's tank. We can see the Summer, we uh, it's products like the SmartPak X, uh, SmartPak XL, and SmartPak XL Plus. And the GRC is product like the IceRake Micro, and IceRake One Standard, uh, IceRake One Tip, as paired as like A24. And all these tanks can be compatible with uh, Gigabyte Immersive Ready Server. So this is our product portfolio uh, by Intel, M A Ampere, and AMD. We have this series here. And uh, E-series will be the edge server uh, with the short depth chassis uh, and GPU combination. Our series normally will be the general purpose server with the lower power. 
edge series, this is the high density server, 2U4 now, 2U3 now, or 2U2 now. Uh, G series, uh, this one is, well, Gigabyte are really good at this one. Uh, our GPU server, we have one U, four to six GPU, two U, eight GPU, which is exclusive in the market. Storage server will be the storage purpose, will be the S series. And we also have the, like the workstation and multiple products. And finally, this is the advanced cooling. We can provide three type of the cooling solution, air, uh, direct liquid cooling, and immersion cooling. So our immersive ready server in our chain of products so far, we have three series. H series, high density, G series GPU, and S series storage. So you can take a look at uh, in our booth because uh, in our 25U tank, so far we have the immersive ready server inside. And in the near future, we will also have the rec mount server, R series. This is of in the new in the new future will be our immersive ready server as our channel products. Okay, so here I would like to go for the immersion cooling comparison. For the immersion cooling comparison, the first one here we can compare the air and immersion cooling the advantages. And so starting with the PUE, we can see the air cooling the PUE uh, will be 1.6, and the immersion cooling will be 1.06. And the cooling capacity, air, air cooling per rack will be 20 kilowatt, and immersion cooling will be 80 kilowatt per tank. And for the liquid, uh, single phase immersion cooling, we use the oil-based liquid, that is the hydrogen carbon base. And two phase, we use the flow liner-based liquid. And air cooling will be easy to deploy, but the immersion cooling we need to consider like the uh, cooling tower piping or uh, electricity. And Noiseless and dust free, immersion cooling will be perfect because for the immersive ready server, there is no fan, right? So there is no noise, there is also no dust. And for the cost of maintenance and deployment, the two phase immersion cooling will be more expensive because it's technically complex. And less one is the operation expense. For the operation expense, the immersion cooling can save a lot because the electricity cost saving. So, and this one, is Gigabyte, what Gigabyte can provide to our customer. This is our analysis. And like the pyramid, we can see from the uh, server to the tank, from the tank to the data center, and we can do the calculation and the comparison between the air and immersion cooling. For example, including like the power consumption, uh, PUE, and electricity expense, site space, also for TCO and KPEX. And we can see this is uh, just for an example, and the cooling comparison, we use the 240 server to do the comparison uh, uh, between the air and immersion cooling. So here I pick, uh, pick up some very important parameters to do the comparison. The first one is the PUE. We can see the PUE, the immersion cooling can save 27% to compare with the air cooling. The second one is the data center size. Uh, with the 240 server for the immersion cooling data center, uh, it can save 24% uh, to compare with the traditional air cooling data center. And next one is the total power consumption. We can see the total power consumption. This is the data center total power. We, for the immersion cooling, can save 37% to compare with the air cooling. And the rest of others, like the electricity expense and carbon emission, these this two will be followed by the uh, total power consumption. So it also saves 37%. So by this kind of the comparison, uh, we can know the immersion cooling uh, will be the best cooling technology for the energy saving and also for the envi envir environment friendly. So the last topic I would like to talk about the uh, Gigabyte uh, immersion cooling solution. So why we go for Gigabyte? So here, this is our service. From server to tank, from site planning to cost assessment, uh, we can provide the preliminary analysis for the data center deployment. And the second one, uh, we have the wide range of the IT equipment for the server and also for the tank. And we also really good at the thermal optimization. For example, like our GPU server, uh, we have one U, four to six GPU, two U, eight GPU. That is a very small form factor. And with the high density, that, but we 
made it uh, made it without uh, compromising the performance. And the next one is the tank. For the tank itself, uh, we so far we made it like a uh, 25 UEI tank with cooling capacity, 80 kilowatt. But so far in the market, uh, uh, I remember it's 50 kilowatt in the market. And uh, we also have the very useful tool. We design a very useful tool for the hardware management, that is for maintenance or for the server and also for the tank. And we also can have the hardware system integration uh, depends on the all data center structure. And this is, uh, we, that means we can provide a customization uh, to our customer for the server and tank to meet the customer requirement. The uh, last one, this is our system, a software management system. We can do the software management integration with the environment management system for analysis and also for the worry-free operation. So with our service, uh, Gigabyte can provide a one-stop shopping solution. And this is our immersion tank management system. We have two parts, hardware parts and software parts. And this is hardware parts. Uh, first one, you can see the left, left picture here. This is the IT lifting. And with the IT lifting, we can lift the server uh, up and down by only one button press. And uh, for this kind of IT lifting, we can use it uh, uh, for when, when we remove the server from the tank or do the maintenance. In the middle here, we this is the IT dry rack. Uh, with the IT dry rack, we can we can we use for uh, dry the server once we take out the server from the oil, and and dry the IT. And with this IT dry rack, we can support a 20 OU for OCP server and 20 U for EIA server. And we can also uh, with the spatial bracket design, we can also. Uh, we can also mix two types of the server on the same IT dry rack. For example, like we can put five uh, EIA uh, and five OCP server on the same IT dry rack. And the last one here, this is for the software. The software management tool, we have two parts. The first part is the uh, HMI system. For the HMI system, uh, we can monitor the tank status, for example, like the uh, PUE, power con consumption, uh, liquid level. And the second part here, we have the uh, GSM management system. This is this small black box, we call it bricks. And with the bricks, we can collect all the information, uh, for example, like the CDU, uh, PDU, and server. And we collect all the information, synchronizing all the information. And finally, we send it to the data center infrastructure management for analysis. And so we also can do the remote access uh, with the uh, with the tank CDU PDU and server, and all for for reaching all these features, uh, which is only applicable uh, with Giga Computing products, uh, we do like this kind of the integration based on all of Giga Computing products uh, without the limitation. So Giga, Giga, Gigabyte can provide like. Uh, uh, this kind of the integration, and we can provide a total solution for the immersion cooling. So our vision is uh, committed to meet the customer expectation. And this page uh, is what uh, Giga Computing or Gigabyte are doing right now. So on the road to sustainability, we never hesitate. And uh, a few days ago, uh, Jason Huang, uh, he delivered a speech at the Taiwan University. He say, uh, wrong, don't walk. So here I would like to also make some change. Wrong, sorry. Running towards the sustainability, we never hesitate. So let's go for the gigabyte solution. <laughs> Thank you.